Hello everyone and welcome back to So Granny So. I kind of jumped the gun on that live last night. I did not realize that uh, when you first requested for a live, uh, you push the button and then you got to wait 24 hours uh, on the first one. So we are waiting out that 24 hours. It should be good to go by tonight, uh, but just in case we're going to set that live for uh, tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and get this table runner finished up today. Uh, we have the top all done and as you can see, I did get the embroidery done now. Um, so we got the blue and the purple, and I used the darker purple this time than the other one. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our batting, and this is an 80-20 poly cotton or poly cotton batting, uh, cotton poly actually. Uh, it's 80 cotton and 20 poly. So on this, uh, once again, you can see the bumps on it. That is your top side. The smooth side is your back side. So you want it that way. That way, when you're closing it, uh, it doesn't pull the fibers up through. So. On these, because uh, she wanted one just like I had made, we are just going to uh, bat in this part here, the middle section, uh, from there to there, uh, stopping both of them at the butterfly ones, both ends. So we're just going to lay that out, find where we need to cut that at. I'm going to leave a little extra for seam allowance, uh, just so we can trim that down to the perfect size we need when we go to sew it. And as I said prior in the video, you can just grab a scrap. This is just a leftover from making a quilt. Uh, so it doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Um, on the other ones, I used just a poly batting. So that's what I had handy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut that. And it doesn't have to be exact this first time. We're just kind of getting a piece that we can work with here. back okay now we can get rid of the excess off the table and that helps to free up some room since we have limited space here we're going to set this piece aside and we're going to go ahead and cut out our backing and i have it laid on the table just like we would lay it out uh you know just like it's going to fall once it's sewn Okay, so then I'm just going to go ahead. I know i got to cut off the selvage on this side as all, well, other than this point here. Later, just go ahead and cut off the excess to free it. Okay, and then just fold it over on itself a little bit and pull that up to the next section of it. And we'll just keep working all the way down until we have it all cut out. Okay, we are nearing the end here. And I'm leaving a good half an inch at the end for the fact that once you iron it up and and lay it flat and pin it and stuff, you might need that little bit extra in there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a little extra. The good news is we have plenty of this left, so we can certainly make another runner or put, add it into a quilt the iron board and iron that flat and get that selvage off and then I'll meet you back here. Selvage off and I got it ironed flat. So our next step is we're going to lay the bottom one face up, the top side of the runner face down, and we're just going to line that up a little bit and make sure we're fully on all the way along. I'm going to slide that down because we're going to start in the middle to assemble it. So see the importance of leaving a little bit extra on it? Because you never know which way it's going to shift or how it's going to lay. or So it's always nice just to leave that little bit of extra because then you have it. Okay, so we're going to start in the middle with pinning it. Let me grab some pins here quick. Sorry for the shaking. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pin the beginning of this into place. The beginning of this middle section is all. Okay, so then we're just going to make sure that this is all lined up. I left a little more extra than normal down here, so we're good there. So we're going to go ahead and take that batting. Now this is going to cover everything in here, so that's why you want to be real precise on having that lined up ahead of time. 
Now, if you want to bat your whole thing, you you certainly could. Uh, I just batted the middle for the fact that these are not being used for like a normal table runner. They're more for decor. Um, so I was not concerned with batting in the whole thing. But that's fine. Okay, so once you have that in the place, we're going to go ahead and pin that down on this section. It's always best when you're quilting to work from the middle out. Uh, not necessarily quilting, but sewing any project, basically, if you got a long stretch like that. Sew it from the middle out because you can adjust the ends versus having to try to fix the middle once you work from one end to the other. Work on the end. So make sure it's good and lined up. Everything's nice and smooth. And then we'll go ahead and pin that into place. Our peppers, it's been so hot this year. Our peppers are doing wonderful. Our tomatoes, we have tons and tons of green tomatoes, but no red ones yet. I was talking to a few people at the farmer's market last Saturday, and they were having the same stuff happening as well. So it's just kind of a, all over around southern Minnesota right now anyways. Some people are doing really good, and... Others are not getting nothing uh, to ripen. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this other end done. Now I am going to take this section here and mark it with double pins to remind myself. This is the section, well, let me open that up. From the beginning of this piece to the end of this piece on one side, that's the section you're going to leave open uh, and not sew along there. Uh, so we can turn it the right way when we're all done sewing it together. Now that we've got it pinned together, we'll start at one end and we'll sew a quarter inch seam all the way around, all of it, uh, and end up back here. Make sure you back stitch back on both sides real well because when you're turning it the right way, uh, you don't want to rip off the so I'll get that sewn up and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how to trim everything up and get it turned the right way. I wanted to bring you over to the sewing machine here. Uh, I did get this side done, um, but as I'm going along, I wanted to show you a few few tricks that you can use. Okay, so I'm just sewing with a quarter inch seam. I'm going along the top because remember the bottom's bigger, um, but we're approaching the batting. So I wanted to show you how to do that as well. Um, so I just pull my pin. And I use it to hold these down as I'm going to sew it. So we'll go ahead and get started. I did go ahead and trim off these right to the edge of that uh, on both ends of the middle. Um, so I know that one's trimmed up and that one's lined up good. These I did not trim up. So you can see that the batting is bigger than those. So I am just go along and kind of eyeball it. I hold my hand about where I think it should be. Uh, and every once in a while, I'll flip it up and I'll look to make sure that it's at least covering that. Because we can always trim it up and then go back and redo this area. It's just two short areas on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew along there and you can kind of observe that. Uh, and get a rough idea and then I'll show you how to trim it up and we can go back over it if we need to. One thing to keep in mind is you don't want to pull on your piece, uh, whatever you're sewing. You just want to let the machine take it. Uh, and that's where, like, these these areas here where it buckles up like that, it pulls that out on its own uh, and keeps the bottom straight, but it will pull on the top so it does manipulate it a little bit. So you do want to just let the machine take it. You're just along for the ride. You're just holding it in place uh, very lightly.
So I just sew right up to that seam we put across there and you turn it up and sometimes it's right on and sometimes you need to take one more stitch. To the part where we don't want to sew, so we'll just go ahead and stitch up to there and back tack that. We'll check out how we did with the battingness and see if we need to fix that. So as we see, we got did get it on the batting. We'll flip it over and it looks like we did did good as far as this part. Uh, but we need to open them up the seam and make sure that we have a good amount of, if you can look in there, a good amount of that in. Uh, another thing you can do is trim your batting up right away uh, to the exact size. I don't mess around with that because usually we can get it pretty good. This one looks like we're going to have to go through and fix. Fix that one a little bit closer. So we're going to go ahead and trim this up. Flip that over. And we'll trim that up to the uh, backing. Up. So now we're going to go ahead and go back over there and you can see like right here we're like real close to the edge of that purple because we were doing it from the batting side so it didn't get caught in the machine. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to run a quarter inch seam along all of this again uh, to make sure that we got the front of that, uh, the front of it as you can see it's not quite catching there to make sure that we got the front of it uh, in that sewing as well. Um, so I'll get that done and I'll meet you back here around that uh, just where the batting of that and sewed and as you can see it was quite a ways off um, which is why we couldn't find no front layer in there so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to trim up around the top without cutting into that top And when we get to the peaks, we're going to go ahead and trim that off just about an eighth of an inch away from that peak. Uh, right there, we'll do it again on the ends here, on each side. And that's just to the reduce the bulk inside the points. So we'll go ahead and we'll trim around all this and then I'll meet you back here. That all trimmed up. Uh, this is our opening. I didn't trim along here because actually the more fabric we have in there, the better. Uh, it's a little bit easier to... You don't have to put your hand in here if you don't want to. I just find it easier to grab a hold of it. Uh, if I put my whole hand in there, that's why I like leaving a nice big uh, piece for you to turn around in there. So I just go in and grab the longest end and pull that back through. And get that shorter end and pull that through. Then we have to get them points tucked in, right? So, a, a pencil, a chopstick, whatever you want to peek them points out at each end, that'd be fine. I'm just gonna do it that way and then I'm gonna roll the seams. To the ironing board, and when we iron it, I just roll those seams like this and then iron as I go. So when you get to this part here, you're gonna tuck that in, just like this, you know, make sure these are fine here. Then you're gonna tuck that in and line that up. You can actually line it up and pin it if you want, if you got just a little silver pins with no plastic on them uh, and iron right over top of them. So we're gonna go ahead and get this iron flat and then I'll meet you back here. Oh, iron flat. Now we need to close the seam up yet. So I'm just going to take some of this color because it's this and this are the same ones. Um, and this one is the color I have that matches that best. So I'm just going to do a hidden, hidden stitch in between the two layers here to close that up. Um, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and thread uh, the sewing machine with a beige color and go around this uh, just inside the seam a little bit. I'll put my presser foot right up to that seam and stitch along that. Um, so hold that batting down that's on the inside and I'll do that at both ends along the outside edge here to hold that together. Now the ones that I'm making here um, are not meant to actually be utilized. Uh, they're just for decor. So you might want to top stitch a little more than that. Uh, if you really like this video and found it useful, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up as it helps the channel grow. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe because we'd really love to have you here at 